you know, I have been listening very, you know, uh, carefully all the rest of the speakers. And, and I think that what I'm going to say, it's very, very similar to what they actually identified in their own countries. So my, my first thought is, and I think that it, you know this very well, you know, Dr. Plotkin and, and Susan, you know, and, and this is one of the most famous, you know, statements and something that you already know and advocate. And actually when you hear him uh, speak about vaccines, is completely true, you know, the, the impact of vaccination. It's very, very hard to exaggerate because it has been really one of the major uh, interventions to decrease mortality and morbidity all over the world. But what happened, you know, when you are facing any new disease, what it, the first actually thing that you think is Okay, so we need to focus on, we need to develop a vaccine very, very fast because it, it's the only intervention that would really make a difference. But of course, as a scientist and a vaccinologist, you imagine that this is going to be the way, you know, you create vaccine and then you can fight against the disease. But actually, you know, that is not that simple, right? So, and again, so many things that you learn from him. And if you hear, you say, what looks simple and retrospective, it was much complicated than you thought. And I think that this is what we are facing today. As a scientists and vaccinology, vaccinology experts all over the world, we have been focusing in the last, I don't know, 10 years in four important things. We knew that we needed to do better vaccines. We are really doing it. We knew that we needed to do safer vaccines, right? So we did it. And we are developing much, much better and safer vaccines. We knew that we had to do, of course, better and safer vaccines and faster. And this is something that we just actually learned and discovered during the pandemic and is that we can really do it. And much more, if you put a lot of effort, a lot of resources and a lot of alliances in doing this. And I think this pandemic, you know, made us discover and accelerate a lot of this new and a lot of improvements all over the world in related to vaccines. And one of the most important things, we have better vaccines, we have safer vaccines, and we have them faster. So now we need the people actually to get the vaccine. And I think that this is the main, main challenge that we are facing today, because in less than a year, we have developed a lot of good vaccines, much as, as you know, it was said before, much better than we actually initially imaginated that they could be. And we have developed a lot of platforms to make them faster. But now that we have them, not all of them, but we need to get to the people that need to get the vaccine. So this is in theory, of course, what we are facing today is two main challenges in terms of getting the people the vaccine. One is something that we all know, that is the main issue related to the access and the availability of the vaccines. And this is a huge thing. And the other important factor is, of course, vaccine uptake. I can have the best vaccine in the world, the safest vaccine in the world, and I can have them here, but you need the people to accept to get the vaccine. And these are the two ma major challenges that we are facing today. First, because you need that every one of the countries want to include the vaccine. You need them 
to make programs, you need them to make the decisions to include the vaccines that you have available for in this uh, aspect for COVID. Second, let's say that they accept to have the vaccine. So how would they plan and implement immunization programs in every one of the realities and infrastructures, right, in, in different parts of the world? The manufacturing process that has shown to be much, much more challenging than initially thought, the same about supply and logistics. Not all the countries has, have the same capacity in terms of supply, logistics, and specifically for these new vaccines that you know, they, they have been shown that you need a lot of different steps and, and, uh, and infrastructure to, to deliver all the vaccines. And also something very important and it's the equity. I mean, if you divide the world, we all know that one of the main challenges is what we are going to do for the low middle income countries and the equity. So this is Argentina. So the, I'm going to speak a little about what happened in Argentina, but I think it's a reflect, reflection from other very similar countries in, in Latin America. So in Argentina, this is the, the confirmed cases of COVID. And as in other, all countries in the world, we have had our peaks, our valleys, and now we are trying to see if we are going to face the second wave, it has started or not, and what is going to happen. But this is something that every country see very, very familiar. So in terms of the vaccination, Argentina from the very beginning has been trying to get the attention from, uh, from many manufacturers of the vaccines, China, uh, the, the Sputnik vaccine as well. So they have been trying to see as every one of the countries, what vaccine would they get? So they started at the beginning of the pandemic to think about how good they going to do the programs, how would they distribute the vaccine in a country where you have more than 20 states that they are very, very different. It's not the same in the metropolitan area of Buenos Aires than in the north or in the south of the country where the resources are different, the community is different, and the idiosyncrasies are different. So in the from, from the very uh, first moment where the vaccines were available, they started to speak with the, with the governments and the manufacturers to try to bring the vaccine to Argentina. And they planned a strategic uh, program to distribute the vaccine in all the state of Argentina, trying to respect the, the percentage of the population in every one of the states. So what happened? What happened is that they developed a strategic plan as the same as in every country in the world, trying to focus first on the healthcare workers and of course, of course the elderly people and then if the vaccine were available, try to go over the other high risk groups. So what happened? One, one thing is when you have in theory and then when you start actually implementing and receiving the vaccines that they are available. Today, and this is just to show you how difficult it is when you have a plan and then you need to implement. So this is up to last week. And what we see here is it's just numbers, but this is actually an important number because from 
the four millions of doses that they were distributed all over the country, actually you have less than three million people that they actually receive one doses and much, much less people that they received the second dose of the vaccine. And this is just, I think that an important way to show what this means actually in general population. Because you can have millions of doses that they are distributed or even administered. But if you see, when you compare and you really do your calculation in relation to the overall population of the country, the numbers are very low. And this is not something that happens here, something that was happening in a lot of countries in Latin America. And this is one example of vaccine availability. Because our first vaccine, the first vaccine that was introduced here in Argentina was the Sputnik vaccine. Even before we had the information available in peer reviewed journals, we had had the, the vaccine administered and, and uh, distributed here in Argentina. So then it was weeks after when we started to receive the other vaccines, the Sinopharm and the COVID shield. So we didn't have the opportunity to receive other vaccines, but what we know is that our authorities are trying to negotiate and to get the vaccine from, of course, all the approved uh, manufacturers. And I think that's, it's one of the biggest challenges that we have because as, as we know, vaccines are distributed not very equally in all parts of the world. So it's a challenge to receive and every country of course is fighting to try to get this as many doses as possible for their own populations. So we are now starting to see or we will start to see people that will receive the second doses of the Sinopharm and the COVID shield vaccine as well. And when you see in the high risk groups, the distribution has been interesting because most of the vaccines have been distributed to the healthcare workers, second to the elderly people. But also you have people that they have comorbidities or strategic personnel that has been started to be vaccinated. So this is something that I believe is interesting because it shows how Latin American countries compare themselves, right? We have Argentina that is quite in the middle, but if you see the rest of the other countries are in a very similar situation. Chile has been an exception because it has different um, strategies to get the vaccine and to, to start very, very, very fast and with a very strong program. And this is the people have, that has been fully vaccinated. This is people who receive at least one dose of the vaccine and it's very very similar and the same when you compare vaccine doses administered per 100 people so i think that from the latin american perspective there are a lot of a lot of different challenges because not only you need to work in having availability of vaccines but also we are starting to learn a lot of different things that they are very similar to what the previous speaker speakers actually mentioned. And one of the main challenge is the vaccine uptake. How do we communicate? How we advocate for vaccines? And I, I wanted to bring very interesting research that a group that is um, led by uh, the Fundación Bungiborn, taking as a model 
the Vaccine Confidence Project, the last year and in 2019 and 2020, and they created an, a vaccine index, index, vaccine confidence actually index. In general, regarding the vaccines, but in the 2020, they added questions regarding the COVID vaccine. So, and this is very interesting. This is this data has not been published yet because it has been analyzed uh, a couple of weeks ago, but it's very very interesting. You know, they have created a vaccine confidence confidence index that included different variables in terms of the the um, safety and the efficacy and if they if the people think that vaccines are safe for efficacious for children so they created the index and when they compare 2019 versus 2020 the index the confidence decrease by seven percent it's a very interesting point but what is most interesting is they added a question because it was this was done in october and the data was analyzed now. So this is very similar to what, for example, happened in Israel. If you have 100 people, 72 of them would get the vaccine, the COVID vaccine, if they have it available. But interesting, you have almost 30 people from this 100 that they rather to wait to receive the vaccine. And this is something interesting because Latin America has been always a country with a very positive feeling and feedback regarding vaccines. So, and this is, I think the most inter interesting factor that is most of the people that they wouldn't receive the vaccine wouldn't do it because they think that there is a lot of stages and evaluation process left. And this is a point that is worth actually to work about. And this is an opportunity. So one of the things is trying to know what happened in your community. That's why attitudinal research is so important because it's the way to actually understand the opportunities for improvement. Second is and very related to it, of course, addressing vaccine hesitancy to try to increase vaccine uptake. And why is so important? Because we are scientists, we need to get out from our comfort zone and communicate and learn communication skills and know about ethical principles in immunization programs. And why is so important? Because this is an example of what we see you know, in the media or in the, the social networks. This is just, I took some images that I, I took, I asked permission to Dr. Uh, Sanikas that he's an excellent communicator, excellent. And this is one of the examples, you know, not only for the, you know, this specific vaccine, but see what happens, you know, people, actually, and, and you see it in Argentina, as well as all over the world, there has been so many um, doubts in terms of the evaluation of the safety of the vaccines, the presentation, the information, the peer review, peer review journals. So the people, they don't know actually what to think about. And that is, that, that is why it's so important for us that we are the scientists to get out and communicate with transparency and trying to be honest, but the people need to hear what we think and actually to bring you know, confidence to all of our population. So this is something that I just wanted to bring. Of course, these are major challenges. We know them very well but we need to work on them. We need to know every one of them and communicate 
to the people. Because if we understand them and we communicate them well, these challenges can actually transform into the opportunities. But we don't know how to change if we don't know it. So we need, I think, two major things to work about. One is the public and private alliances in terms of delivery of the vaccines. This is going to change, actually, as COVAX and a lot of different um, alliances that they are making possible to bring the vaccines to all over the world. And something that for us is more complicated because we are very comfortable giving our scientific talks and discussing with scientific uh, community, but actually we need to get out. We need to get out and talk to the people, talk to the media and show and bring evidence, but with confidence so the people can actually trust in the science and trust in the data. And I think that if, the, if we do this, it's the only way actually that we can order, make some order in this puzzle and try to be a little closer to increase our numbers and to make the people trust in what we do.